questions. My question was simple. I just need an explanation of why I cannot be seen in my local hospital for something as simple as just a counseling session. Um, he kept try, he kept trying to say, is it an emergency? Is this an emergency? Is this a psychological emergency? I'm just like, no. It's just something I have the right to do and to be seen in my local community. And there's multiple counselors there, right? Yeah, and he is advising me that I need to go to Anchorage. And um, it's, uh, d you know, depending on what time of year it is, it's a 10 to 12-hour drive um, round trip to go do that. Um, hotels are somewhere between 180 to $220 a night. Lodging, food, gas, travel, risk, all that. It was un it was ridiculous. Do you have uh, proof that that meeting occurred with uh, Jeremy O'Neill and he denied you services? Yes, yeah, so Jeremy O'Neill was so uncomfortable with the camera in the room. I imagine he's destroyed the footage. Um, that he he finally slipped out into the hallway. Um, I followed him and we went to his office and then I got uh, my friend on the phone to be witness to this this. Um, this situation and we went into Jeremy O'Neill's office his entire staff was literally looking like they were about to cry they knew that there was something horribly bad what was going on and what had happened to my family he shuts and locks the door I have a discussion and I straight up just say how in the world is the CFO and the guy running for mayor involved himself into my life my children my wife and my my finances and now advising me you're not even involved with the council center saying I cannot see a counselor he literally crumbled and almost was ducked down behind his desk um, and wouldn't answer any questions and basically just said the meeting was over and that was that okay but yeah we do have proof of that though um, so interesting um, you know I'll just say this you know I'm I've been in Valdez for 20, since 1991. I've seen uh, what's been going on in this town. They've been destroying any entrepreneur or anybody who doesn't get, you know, buy into the system. And they destroy them. Um, there's a long list of people that have been destroyed, um, their businesses or whatever. Anybody smart enough to look over their shoulder and say, wait a minute, this town gets $90 million a year for 3,800 people and we have nothing to show for it? That's basically what happened. I was protected for quite some time because my wife comes from kind of the mob in Chicago. And it, it appears now that uh, Bill Walker and Richards were laundering some of the money, investing the money into some of these um, investment firms like Nyquist Financial, Platte River Equity, um, CBRE in Beverly Hills, uh, Blue Flame Financial in Washington and California. And... Um, uh, Ritman uh, Financial in California um, and Paul Moore as uh, Maroon Bell's Capital and one other. Um, it appears that they already had a relationship of uh, investing money, embezzling money, um, laundering money out of there. Um, so I opened a can of worms and what I really opened up was the seriousness of how big this is. It's a syndicate. It's a it's an operation that's not just in Alaska, not just in Valdez. As soon as this all went down, um, they brought in these guys by the name of the Browns. They own a company called Toon and Geeks in the Woods. They set up basically a hacking facility on my property that I sold them land on, and they had their own cell phone tower on my property. Um, they then brought in a new uh, controller to take over the controlling. And this is um, interesting. Tom Schantz used to be the controller. And I had a discussion with him once about, you know, the governor who used to be the law firm of our town forcing me to build a road grossly above compliance and how it was just like, felt like they were, you know, sandbagging me and destroying me and sabotaging me. He goes,